Hello and welcome back to Code in Five Minutes with Zim. I'm Dr. Abstract, and this Code in Five Minutes, we're going to make a hoverboard. Woohoo! So let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com and we'll press on Code and we'll copy the template. We'll reduce this down and pop on in to got hover.html open. Scroll on up. We'll change this to Zim Hoverboard. Hoverboard. A fellow called Florin Pop made a hoverboard. We're going to see if we can make it in five minutes. These have been around for a while. They're just a grid, and as you roll over the grid, it changes color. Not sure if they've always been called a hoverboard, but that's a good name for it. Why not? All right, so we come on down here, and we're pretty well ready to go. Why don't we change this to uh, black? Black and black. There we go. I'm cheating a little bit. Not that I think we'll be fine making this in five minutes. So we get rid of uh, this stuff here, and when we're ready with we'll put your code here and a stage dot update, and we open in browser. We are ready to go. Okay, so we'll start our timer. Bump up, beep, 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 beep. Start timer going. Woohoo! Okay, let's uh, begin with the tile. So new tile and a new rectangle inside. Uh, tell you what, we will make a const size s is equal to 16 and a const uh, margin I guess of 3 or something like that is spacing but we already used the s. And this rectangle therefore will be the size by the size. We'll make it darker in color we will have no border and no border color, but we will give it a little corner of three. Oh. And uh, we'll make, I don't know, 30 of them by 20 of them or something like that. What about spacing? Oh yeah, we'll do that M's in there. M and M. So M in the uh, X and M in the Y, that's our little uh, bit of three there for the spacings and we will dot center that on the stage. And let's see if we have our hoverboard then. So come on back and refresh. Uh, there's our hoverboard. And we will um, put an event on that. So if we want an on event, we need to const tile this is equal to that. And we can say tile dot on mouse over Come on, call this arrow function. We'll use the E here, the event object, collect that. And we can say e.target.color is equal to, we'll use a zim pick, pick.choose. So that's a static method there, the choose method, and we'll pass in any of the pick formats. And for instance, an array of red, green, blue, uh, yellow, pink, punk, <laughs> and orange. Sound good? So that will change the color. We might want to stage dot update so that we see that color change. And we could time out. Time out. Uh, how long? 2000, I guess. Uh, call this arrow function. And in that arrow function, we can turn it back again to uh, whatever it was before. So we might want to say something like let square equal to e dot target. And then we can use square ha and ha. Square dot color is equal to darker. Stage dot update. Alrighty, let's see if she works. What do you think? Padunka, dunka, boonka, dunka. And we refresh here. Uh, oh, yeah, there's something going on. Okay. All right, not sure why it missed it. The performance isn't all that great. But there she be. That's a hoverboard. So uh, let's, you know, I mean, close enough anyway. It might have been, <laughs> it could be a little bit better. Let's make it a little bit better. What we'll do is we'll just stop the timer and talk about performance a bit. Is that okay? So we'll stop that away, and that was at whatever, 30, 3 minutes and 33 seconds. So in principle, we've got it. We're dealing with um, a performance issue. 
which is only going to get worse if we say have 5,000 of these things. Like if we, we could, as a matter of fact, open up to a full mode here. Let's do that full mode. And we'll make that null and null so we won't have any width and height. And now this is full mode. We won't notice much difference at the moment, aside from the fact that, uh, I see on here, you, know, you see that as we change that, it's like uh, scaling that for us. But now if we're on full mode, there she be, but uh, we, we don't scale it. Okay, so uh, how can we make the performance better? The issue is on the canvas, a mouse over, it, it, the canvas is all one big picture. So we're actually doing a hit test against a color. And that's not the fastest necessarily to do when you have a lot of things, like you could see that our performance wasn't good and we only had uh, 60 of them or something, 600. Or something. How many is this? 30 times 60? I guess that's 600. <laughs> is that really 600 there? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, you know, is that 600? Uh, must be. All right, I guess it is. Um, yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> so with 600 of them, we got a, uh, it's a double hit. One, we've got 600 vector rectangles being refreshed every time we uh, do that uh, color change and stuff. But I think it's more so we're doing a hit test on the um, shapes and behind there. And it will only get worse if we go to 5,000. So the answer is quite simple. Um, we can, uh, we can first of all, we can cache the tiles. So let's do that. Dot cache. And sorry, we're in for a bit of an explore here, aren't we? So if we cache the tile, the tile is now one picture rather than 600 rectangles to make, or 5,000 rectangles to make, or however many we might want. Uh, the cache will be fine, but now what we're going to want to do is place a rectangle on top of it. So what we can say, let's get ready with a rectangle, const rect is equal to, and we'll pull this rectangle out right here, cut, and paste there, and we'll tile that rect like so. Okay, no, no changes yet really, but down here we won't let the square equal e.target, but instead we'll clone the rectangle dot clone. So what we're going to do is use this rectangle in behind, or sorry, the tile in behind as an image. And then as we roll over parts of the tile, we'll, we'll put a rectangle on top. So there's our rectangle that we're cloning. And we then dot locate that at e.target. So we'll locate it wherever the thing we just rolled over is. Okay, let's uh, check it out. We refresh here. Well, I don't know. I don't uh, even even though that this is all cache now, we're just placing a rectangle on top. I don't think that uh, it's helping performance enough. So it definitely is the mouse over thing here. So we'll replace that with a stage dot on. Uh, luckily, Zim, uh, you know, we've realized this, and for any pixel drawing, anything where you've got a grid, you want to move to a hit test grid. So stage.ons, quotes here, stage mouse move, comma, that's a good one. That means the, the stage or the mouse is moving anywhere on the stage, even if there's nothing underneath it. Then we'll call this arrow function right here. And in the arrow function, we basically do all this stuff. It's slightly different now in that we're going to have to locate this square uh, depending on what the hit test gives us. So here's what the hit test looks like. Mm, let data equal to tile dot hit test grid. Do you like it? Hit test grid. And the hit test grid, it's going to be an equation based hit test based on the following, based on the tiles dot width, the tiles dot height, the tiles dot calls, and I can get that dot calls, the tile dot rows, and where the mouse is. So that is the frame dot mouse x, the frame dot mouse y. So that gives us, uh, you know, you've got the width and the height of the tile, 
plus the calls in the rows, and depending on where the mouse is, it will tell us what the index is. And if we want, we can also get the rows and calls, which we'll need, because if we got the calls and rows, we can locate it based on the calls and rows. But by default, it's an index. We could calculate the calls and rows from an index using the modulus and using a floor and a division and a floor, but that's already been done for us if we ask for a type of data that's an array. So we got to get there. The next is the spacing. Let's do 0, 0 for the spacing, even though there is a spacing of this margin. Um, I don't think it's worth it. As, as we're mousing over this tile, like this is a, a user experience thing. Who cares if you're slightly off? Like I, I don't want to be running along this like little track here and have it not be counted as a mouse over. So I would, I would rather get rid of the spacing in this, and it'll be fine, it'll work out. So let's do spacing of zero. The next is an offset. There is no offset. Uh, although we might want to, instead of centering this tile, let's locate the tile at the spacing and the spacing. Oh, at the margin and the margin. <laughs> because um, we'll put it at the top left corner with, with that margin from the edge. Is that okay? And uh, so there won't be an offset because it's based on where the tile is. So no matter where we put the tile, it's going to assume you're starting at the top left corner of the, at the tile. The offset is if there's anything in the tile, if there's a, a padding in the tile that might offset, this allows you to specify the offset. Uh, followed by whether you want it local. Uh, we'll put that in null. We could uh, there's You can either position it based on the global mouse position, which is what we're doing, or some local uh, position, but we're ignoring that. And finally, we're asking for it to return an array. All right, so a little bit unruly looking, that hit test grid, but it does allow us to um, uh, work dynamically with this kind of stuff, and it gets us the answer as quickly as possible. So that's the data. Now, we basically say if data is equal to null, then return, <laughs> return, because that means it's not, it's not on a grid. So if it's off the grid, especially if you've got spacing there, if it's off the grid, data is going to come back as undefined or something. We can capture it this way. So assuming that we do have data, let's try a deconstruct. So this is ES6. We can say let and have. Uh, the array, what's being returned is, is an array that has an index, a call, and a row, like that, equal to our data. So the data is an array coming back, and we're going to deconstruct that. We're going to put the first thing in the array, which happens to be the index, in a, in a variable called index, the second thing in call, and the next thing in row. So we'll locate it based on that. So here we are going to locate it based on the column in the row. It becomes a fairly easy calculation. If you look at this, uh, if we're on, we got a, oh, let's refresh this. There it is up in the corner. So we have to move over three. <laughs> it's broken at the moment, but we have to move over three. And then depending on the width of these things, and the, the call number, we can sort of locate this, the x position. So we'll start with 3 plus however many calls there are times the width plus the spacing. So the width is what? W? Or is it S? So S and N. Okay. So we want S, S and N here. <laughs> S plus N. Um, there we are. So that that will give us the x position, and we copy that and do the same thing for the y, except it's row. Nice. Yeah, we get to use a bit of math. I mean, we, we went to school for math for years, you know, like, woohoo, we got to use math. All right. Whoa, addition. Yay, grade four, grade four, grade four, grade four. All right. So if you're not in grade four yet or whatever, <laughs> maybe you'll get there soon. <laughs> Uh, even if you weren't in grade four yet, you should know that this is taking longer than five minutes. So it's like, hey, what kind of scam is this? What is, uh, it's code in five minutes. What's going on here? Uh, well, um, <coughs> yeah, whatever. 
Okay, so that's, we're making a clone of the square. We're locating it. Super. Let's see if it works, shall we? Are you ready? We save that up and we refresh here. Wadoomp. Nice. Oh, that's pretty good performance. Agreed. So way better performance. As a matter of fact, no matter how many of these we make, let's make 5,000 of them. Uh, it won't make a difference. So 100 by 50. That's 5,000 of these little rectangles, but we're caching it. So who cares? And we refresh here. And let's F11. F11 for full screen. And we still have excellent, uh, excellent performance. Now they're just kind of disappearing on it, so we could do we could do some fun things. Now note that as we roll over it again, anytime we move the mouse, it's sort of changing color. So that's causing it to flash a touch. I don't mind that; it's okay. But uh, we could maybe improve upon that oh, a couple different ways. One, we could. Uh, we could animate that out. So let's come on down here. Rather than timeouting that thing, let's uh, grab that rectangle. Here it is. Rectangle. We're dot cloning. We're dot locking. And then we will dot animate on that. And animate. The props will be the alpha to zero in some amount of time. 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 2000, that's how you're supposed to say time. Time. 2000, and uh, what else? We should call when that is done and call this arrow function right here a F and remove our object. That object is called square. Whoa, where the heck did we go there? I don't know, what's all this stuff? <laughs> Adam, for crying out loud, it just put something in there. Uh, call square. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, put in some async await or something. Uh, anyway, square dot um, remove from. Remove from. So that takes it away. No point in having me square around and we can even square equals null. That thing we don't need to worry about a stage dot update. It will do that for us. Uh, that cleans up that, that square that we put on there. Shall we see the animate? We don't need the timeout anymore. We don't need the stage dot update. Comment that out. We'll still need a color. And here's what we get. So just recall, it's sort of taking two seconds and then disappearing. Uh, instead, we're going to have um, it sort of animate out there, a nice animated tail. I agree. Looks pretty nice. Okay, maybe a bit sooner. 1,500. Yeah, yeah, no, 1,570. Yeah, okay, let's get on with it. Uh, you know, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for your patience. I know this was a code in five minutes. It's turned into an explorer, hasn't it? We could um, stop it. Like, if we add a bit of blur there, so let's do that. Square dot sha for a shadow, a zero, a zero, so no offset. And oh, the color comes first though, so square dot color, comma. So this is us putting a drop shadow on there with no offset, which is really sort of like a blur. And let's have a look and see what that looks like. A desktop reveal, desktop reveal. So you see how that's kind of got a blur on there? But I don't know if you notice, it's, you know, it's a bit hard to see for you, but for me, it's fine. Um, sometimes when the color goes over top, the blur is the old color. And uh, it's because like there's multiple rectangles are going on there, really. So let's make sure that we just only uh, put a rectangle if there's no rectangle there. That's pretty easy to do. Just a little bit of coding. We would uh, let, or actually let's const something like um, some some variable name that means it's already the active. Okay, there we go. Active is equal to some square brackets. So this is going to record at this index here. Uh, do we have an index? There's a let index. So once we get an index, we can say if active at the index. 
then return. So if that, that's already there. If there's a positive thing inside of the active at the index return and right underneath, uh, we have to set that positive thing if we are indeed making it through here. Index uh, is equal to one, it's fine. See what we've done, we come in, if there's nothing at the index, we put something at the index. Later, the next time it comes in, it, it you know, won't do it. Now this would obviously uh, put the color once, but then watch, as I come back over that, I can't get the color again because the index is still sitting at one. So at some point we have to turn the index back to zero and that would be when we're, when we're done with it here. So once we finish animating it, we're gonna set the index to zero or set it to null, whatever. And when we refresh here, now it does it there, but I can then still do it again I just can't do it until the animation is finished. And that tidies up the blur. I think blur looks fine. Tidies it up there. Uh, how's it going? But I mean, this is Zim. It's, it's okay. This is Zim. It should be something like const emitter is equal to a new emitter. And then let's emit uh, a new rectangle. Uh, like that, and we'll emit the same size, S and S, but we'll give it null for a color. Actually, that might have to be clear for a color, and then, I don't know, light for a, a border. So there's an emitter, squigglies, this is the OBJ. So we're dropping into the Zim Duo technique here, which is nice in Zim. And then we can say force, no force, zero. Then only the gravity will act on that. And I don't want to shrink it either. So shrink, cool, false, like that. So there's our emitter. We're going to start paused, start paused, colon true. Can you guess what we're going to do? So there we are, a new emitter, started paused. What we'll do down here is when we get that square, there's the square dot color in the car, we can kind of go uh, emitter dot loc at the square dot top. We'll bring it up to the top, make sure that it's always on the top, and then dot emit no spurt. That's what it's called. Spurt 10 or 20 or something like that. 20. All right, like I said, this is Zim, it takes two minutes and we can do things like this. We refresh here. Cool. Now I think that we need to center edge that box. I think uh, perhaps, let's take a look where that rectangle go in the emitter. New rectangle, center edge. Does the loc still located at the right place? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe that's what it is. Nah, so that's not doing it. It's not a center reg issue. It uh, probably is center regged. Yeah, I think maybe the emitter automatically center regs stuff. So our loc is a little bit off. Where'd it go? Look at the square. The square is put on there. We've got another square that's center reg. So square dot x plus um, the size divided by two. <laughs> square dot y plus the size divided by two. Sorry, I don't know. maybe it's. Well, let's just check it out. See if that does it. That does it. Okay, so the emitter is center regging our our rectangle automatically. We could probably just change the registration back to the the corner. Uh, that might work. Although all we've done is located the emitter slightly different. And neat, huh? Okay, well you know what? This was just a um, a code in five minutes, and what the heck happened? More like a code in half hour, yeah! Code in half hour with Zim, yeah!
that's what the um, those other things are supposed to be the uh, the explore. So thanks for hanging around. Come join us, jimjazz.com slash slack, and have a great day or night. I am Dr. Abstract. Ciao.